Did you say nine point? Um, so I'm gonna do nine point five. Mm-hmm. And then we'll do nine point six Wednesday, and that's the last material for test four. Okay, thank you. Now, what I want to do is to start out with the support part first. And throw a few things at you that you can recall that'll help us in the section 9.5 for college algebra. So I'm going to refresh y'all on the exponent rules here real quick. So the product rule, when you're multiplying variables, such as x to the a times x to the b, when we're multiplying variables, we add the exponents. Second rule is what we call the power rule. It's when you got a variable with an exponent inside parentheses raised to another exponent. Well, in this case, you would multiply the exponents so that this would equal a, I mean x, to the a times b. So y'all, like I said, this first one is called the product rule. Second one here is called the power rule. My third one deals with division. So if I had x to the a divided by x to the b, in this situation, you subtract exponents so that you get an x to the a minus b. So it's always a top exponent minus the bottom exponent. And the last one you really got to worry about for the exponents in this section is what we do when we have negative exponents. Oh, y'all, let me put right here. This was the quotient rule. And the next one deals with negative exponents because we're not allowed to keep exponents negative. So we got to turn our negative exponents into positive exponents. So if I got a variable with a negative exponent, I flip the variable and make the exponent positive. So to flip it, remember, it's got a one on bottom. So when you flip it, you get one over x to the positive a. So by moving a negative exponent, to the bottom, you can change its sign. Also, say you had one over x to the negative a. So say the variable was in the bottom of the fraction with a negative exponent, we all do the same thing. I flip the variable. So if you flip one over x, you get an x over one and the exponent becomes positive. These two, deal with our negative exponent rule. So we're not allowed to keep exponents negative. So if we do get a negative exponent, then we'll flip it and make that thing positive, okay? So those are the four rules I'm gonna look at first. And, um, do some of these 9.5 support exercises. So the first problem in 9.5 has x to the fifth times x to the negative eight. All right, y'all let me let one in real quick. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, so I'm going back to product rule. I got a variable times a variable. And it tells me to add the exponents. So I'm going to come over here and add my 5 plus that negative 8. All right, y'all. So let's see what we get. 5 plus a negative 8 is going to give us a negative 3. Okay, so subtract and get the sign of the larger number. 8 minus 5 is 3. Larger number is negative. So the answer is negative. But remember, I cannot keep a negative exponent 
So that x to the negative third looks like rule four here. When I got x to a negative a, I flipped the variable and made the exponent positive. So remember, there's a one under that. So when you flip it, you get one over x to the positive third. And you know that right there is what math lab's going to want, okay? So the product rule is probably something you've seen, but dealing with negative exponents might be something new. I'm not sure if uh, our foundations classes deal with negative exponents. So just remember, we cannot keep them negative. We got to make them things positive. Y'all, then they hit y'all with this. Y to the negative four times Y to the ninth times Y to the eighth. So once again, we're multiplying. So we're looking at our product ruled up here. And that tells me to add my exponents. So this one will have y negative four plus nine plus eight. Okay, so all we gotta do now is add our exponents and see what we end up with. So negative four and nine give me a positive five. And then that five plus eight gives me 13. So we get y to the positive 13. Y'all, since this exponent is positive, that would be our final answer. All right, so let's change it up a little bit. On this one, I got nine x squared to the second power times 2x to the fourth power. So here's the thing. Our final operation will be multiplication. We got to take care of some of these exponents first. So let me ask you all this. This 9 does not have an exponent. This 2 or this x, none of those have an exponent. So what exponent would you all put by all of those? Oh, you are gun shy today. So remember this. One. Okay, there you go. I'm going to one by everything that don't have an exponent by it. So put a one by the nine, a one by the two, and a one by that X. Because y'all, the first rule we got to do is this power rule up here. We got variables and numbers with exponents raised to an exponent. So we need to multiply the exponents inside the parentheses by that two. So I'm gonna start with my nine. And we'll bring down my nine. One times two is two. So that's gonna give me a nine squared. On the X, two times two is four. All right, over here, we'll distribute a four through these parentheses. So for my two, one times four gives me four. For that X, one times four gives me a four. All right, y'all. So before I actually multiply these, I'm gonna take care of this nine squared and this two to the fourth power. I'm actually gonna turn them into numbers. So nine squared will be nine times nine. So that's gonna give me 81 X to the fourth times Two to the fourth would be two times two is four, times two is eight, times two gives us 16. So this one gives me 16 X to the fourth. All right, so here's the thing. The number we multiply to 81 times the 16. Then when I multiply this X four times the X four, I'm gonna add exponents, okay? But you physically got to multiply to 81 times 16. So y'all, if I punched in 81 times 16 on my calculator, that gives me 1296. Now I'm going to bring down my X. So y'all, what exponent are y'all putting on that X? I think it's eight. And it will be an eight. Good job. So it gets a little confusing because 
all this is being multiplied, but when you got these exponents, remember, all we're doing is adding them. All right, let's see, number four here. Y'all, they gave us a B to the seven over B to the negative two. So now we're looking at a quotient rule where we take the exponent on top and subtract the exponent on the bottom. All right, y'all, so I'm subtracting a negative, so that's going to do a little bit to this, because I'm subtracting a negative two. And y'all remember, when you subtract a negative, that's going to become a positive. So this is actually a B seven plus two. So now I know I'm, there's no way I'm going to end up with a negative exponent. So just add seven and two, and I get a B to the ninth. And y'all just remember one thing. Anytime that exponent on the bottom is negative, it's basically going to do this and turn into a positive, okay? All right, y'all, let me try number five here. Five, and this is the last one for the support. I got 4x to the eighth, y to the six, and an exponent of two outside those parentheses. So what I would do first is put me an exponent by that four. And guess what? We're going to put a... One by the four. Because this exponent on the outside of these parentheses affects everything inside here. It affects the one, the eight, and the six. And remember, when I got an exponent raised to an exponent, like this power rule says, we're going to multiply. All right, y'all. So for the four, I got one times two, which is two. On the X, we got eight times two, which is 16. And on the Y, I got six times two, which is 12. Now, y'all, the only thing you can do to this is figure out what four squared equals. Because they always want the numbers simplified and figured out, okay? All right, so let's see. We got four times four is what a 16 x 16, y 12. All right, y'all, so that's what the support's going to do is have a little bit of uh, exponents and get you ready for my 9.5 called a algebra. But y'all, one more thing that you need to recall for this section. So I'm just going to sort of box this out over here. You got to be able to rewrite stuff with radicals as fractional exponents. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So to Rewrite a radical as a fractional exponent. You bring the base over, which is the x. The exponent of the x becomes the top number of the fraction. The index of the radical or the root becomes the bottom number of the fraction. Now, let me just play with y'all a second. What if I had a cube root of x? How would I write that as a fraction if it does not have a exponent by the x? That would be x1 over 3. Oh, I, I couldn't hear that. x to the? Would it be x one third? To the one third. There you go. And it goes back to what we was doing over here. If stuff don't have an exponent by it, you got to treat it like it is a 1 sitting there, OK? All right, so one more of these, and we'll get going on our 
college algebra. How about the fifth root of x to the third? That would become what? X Would it be five-thirds? Oh, flip that around and make that a what? Three-fifths, sir. There you go. So, because remember, this exponent is always on the top, and the index here, the five, is always on the bottom, okay? Y'all, what do y'all think this equals? A cube root of x to the third. X with x one. So let's think about it. This would be what? X to the three over three. But y'all guess what? Three divided by three is one. So that my final answer is just x. Because remember, it's understood to have a one there. You know, what happens if the exponent matches the index of that radical? They sort of cancel each other out, and all that's left is that x, okay? All right, y'all, so that was the support. So let's get into... 9.5 college algebra. There you go. 9.5 deals with properties of logarithmic functions. So I'm going to go do a few properties right off the bat, just like I did those exponent rules, okay? So first, we got the product rule of logs. So the product rule says if I got the log base A of a product M times N, this can be rewritten as a sum of the logs. So a sum would be the base, log base A at M plus log base A of M. So I can rewrite a product as a sum of the logs. Rule number two is called the power rule for logs. So the power rule, remember when I had an exponent raised to an exponent. So if I had log base A of M to the P, I rewrite this as a product. So basically what I do is take the exponent P and bring it down to the front so that I get a P times log A of M. And y'all remember, I don't have to write that multiplication. I could write this as a P log A of M, okay? Because remember, that P being by that log means that I'm implying multiplication. Third rule is called the quotient rule of logs. So that'd be used when we got division. Log base A of M divided by N. So remember, just like on the variables, when we were dividing while ago, it's always the top minus the bottom. So this would be a log A of M minus a log A of N. So remember, top exponent minus that bottom. All right, and the rule four is what we call the log 
of a base to a power. So if I had something like this, log base A of A to the X. And y'all, we actually seen this one the other day when we was doing uh, the logs on the calculator. If this base matches the, ba the base raised to an exponent, that answer is always the exponent. So remember last week y'all had stuff like log base three of three to the four. When y'all punched it on the calculator, it gave you a four. So whatever the exponent is will be the answer using this, okay? All righty. So this is where we're gonna keep these four rules in mind doing these problems, okay? So the first two problems want me to express as a sum of logs. And y'all, the only one up here that expresses anything as a sum is my product rule. They're gonna give me a product and I'm gonna rewrite it as a sum. Okay, so that's the only rule that does that. So for number one, we got log base 22 of 22 times 484. All right, so my product is the 22 times the 484. That's my M and M. So I'm going to break this out. And basically, you're distributing the log of 22 to both of these. So you're going to have a log base 22 of 22, that's the first factor, plus you'll have a log base 22 of the second factor, which is the 484. And y'all guess what? All they wanted us to do was express it as a sum. We now have a sum, so we're done. Yo, these ain't too bad if you keep up with these little rules up here, okay? So now what they're doing on the second one, they're using the LN of B times C. But y'all, I do the LNs the same way I did the log here. The only difference, remember, LN is really a log base E. Um, but we don't have to get into all that. All we got to do is distribute our LN to both of these and write it as a sum. So we will have a ln of b, my first factor, plus the ln of c, my second factor, and we're done. Now we'll say- I got a question on that one. Yeah, I hear you. So is MathLab going to take it without the e? Because if ln is understood as an e? Yeah, it's understood. You just write it just like this. Okay. Now, what kills people on these, Jonathan, is they treat this L like a capital I, and when they write it in, they're putting an the I in instead of an L in. Make sure when you write it in, it makes it real bold and dark for you, okay? All right, y'all, for the next two, they want us to express as a product. Well, the only one up here that has me putting stuff as a product is the power rule, where I brought that exponent down and rewrote it as the product of the exponent times the log. So for number three, we got a log base 10 of t to the 15th. Now, actually, they could have, uh, they, I guess they were being nice putting that 10 here. But remember, they didn't need that 10 because if the 10 is gone, it's understood to be a 10 by that log. All right, y'all, the only move we're going to do, we're going to take this 15, and we're going to bring that 15 down to the front so that we get 15 times log base 10 of our T. 
That's all you're doing on the power rule is bringing that exponent down. All right, now I'm going to bring a tricky one on y'all. I got an ln of the fourth root of a six. So y'all, we don't even have an exponent by our six. So y'all are gonna have to figure out how to turn this fourth root into a fractional exponent. So that's gonna give me an ln of six. Y'all, what will my exponent be with that fourth root there? One fourth. One fourth. Now y'all, I got an ln of six to the one fourth. Now we will take the one fourth and bring that down to the front so that we got our product. So we will have a one-fourth ln of six. And y'all, that's why I did a little bit of review on them radicals, because you want to switch these radicals into exponents so that you can use these rules, okay? All right, so the only other rule they're going to hit us with is our quotient rule right here. And they want me to express as sums or differences of logs. What's my bad, y'all? Hang on. Scratch out the sums. This part wants me to do the differences first. I got ahead of myself. My next two will be doing that, okay? So these two examples, we're going to express as differences of logs. And if you notice, the only way to get the differences here is by starting out with a quotient. All right, y'all, we got a log base R of D over three. So distribute your log R to both of these and make this the top minus the bottom. So you get a log base R of D minus a log base R of your three. So notice, things that are on top always end up positive. The things on the bottom always end up negative. So remember that later in life, okay? All right, y'all, here I got an ln of a little m over a little t. All right, y'all, I'll let y'all guess that one for me. And y'all just do that just like y'all did number five. Is it ln m minus ln of t? Perfect, I'll take that, okay? Good job. And just like this, when the top is always positive, whatever's on the bottom always comes up as negative or being subtracted. Now this will start what I was trying to read right, uh, right while go. We're gonna rewrite as sums or differences of logs. So number seven, they're going to give you this, ln and then parentheses, x to the fourth, y to the sixth, and a z. All right, y'all let me let one in real quick. So the first thing I notice on these, these are all being multiplied. So we're going to start out with our product rule of logs, which tells us when things are being multiplied, we rewrite them as a sum. So I got three factors. So I'm going to have three terms on my sum. I want to distribute my ln to the x4 plus my ln or distribute to the y6. Plus my ln or distribute to the z. And y'all notice, 
I put an equal here. Because what I want to know, is there anything else I can do to this based on these four rules? No. Oh, based on the four rules or just the product? Look, I got these four rules up here. Oh, the four rules. So see what I got. I got an LNX4, LNY6, LNZ. And I'm going to give you a clue. It has to do with these exponents. Couldn't you add all the exponents, but you just add one to the Z, I believe, and then you just add them all? Well, you could, but y'all are making it. Y'all are thinking too hard. What about this power rule right here? Remember, this power rule long says if I got a variable raised to the exponent, I rewrite that as a product. So, y'all, anytime you got exponents up here like this, you got to take them exponents and move them down to the front. So, the first one, if we bring the four down, you're going to get a four ln of x. The second one, you bring the six down, you'll get a six ln of y. The z really don't have an exponent other than one. So bringing the one down is not helping us. So we'll just make that an ln of z. So y'all remember, they're not simplified if you can do any of these four rules to them. So when we do have exponents, we're definitely going to bring them down to the front, okay? All right, I'm going to let y'all catch up, and then we'll, we got a fun one coming up. All right, so what? Number eight next. All right, y'all watch this number eight and put a star by this because they love putting this one on your test. So I got a log base B. Now this is going to be a big fraction. On top, I got a P4 and a Q5 over M3 and a B9. All righty, so the first thing I'll do is take my log B and start distributing it. Now remember, while go, I said, if the factors are on top, they'll be added. Any of the factors on bottom will be subtracted when we rewrite this, okay? So our log B, we're going to distribute to all four of these. So I get a log B of P to the fourth. Plus, I'll get a log B of Q to the fifth. So that takes care of my top. Now, remember, these two terms on the bottom have to be subtracted. So it'll be minus log B of M to the third. Minus log B of B to the ninth. Y'all, 100% of the time, factors on top are positive, factors on the bottom are negative. All right, so the question is, what's your next step on at least three of these? Could you do what you did to problem seven? And Yeah, I'm going to bring some exponents down. Now, I'm not doing this one like that because, remember, won't go. I had a property that I gave y'all that said log base A of A to the X equal to X. So, y'all, this log B of B to the 9, all it's going to do is equal a 9. Because, remember, if you brought the 9 down to the front, this log B of B then would equal one, and nine times one is still nine. So when I get to this one, I'm just going to put nine and be done with it. So the first part, you're going to get a, log, a four 
log b of p plus bringing the five down, you get a five log b of q minus bringing a three down, you get a three log b of m. And then since this one followed my fourth, uh, let me find it. So now I'm looking at the log of a base to the power, which said log base A of A to the X was X. Well, y'all right here, we got that. So that equals a nine and we're done. So top positive, bottom negative. And if you get the base matching the base of the result, it's going to always equal that exponent. Oh, and y'all look at this. They did another one with the LN. So it looks like everything that they're doing with logs, they're doing with the LNs. So I got an LN of two divided by nine X to the ninth Y. So y'all first, Let's distribute the ln. So the ln of two, since the two's on top, will be positive. So you're gonna come down with your ln of two. But y'all look at this. I got a nine down here, an x and a ninth down here, and a y. They're all on bottom. So those three terms will all be negative. So minus the ln of nine, minus the ln of x to the ninth minus the ln of the y. So y'all, I ask y'all again, I got one move I can do to this whole problem. Is it to put the exponents in the front? Yep, and y'all, the only one that had the exponent was that x to the ninth. So I'm gonna bring down my ln of two minus my ln of nine. Minus, this now gives me what? 9 ln of x minus my ln of y. And y'all, that's the big thing that people forget. Just remember, bring that exponent down and be done with it. Oh, so the last two doing this are sort of fun and tricky. Let's see what we got. Log of the square root c to the six times a d. All right, y'all, here I'm gonna, the first thing we would do is rewrite this radical. So since this c six d is all under the radical, I'm gonna put that part in parentheses and then have y'all figure out what my exponent will now be. Because what I'm doing is converting this square root into a fractional exponent. Be one. Oh, I just heard it. One. One over. N. Oh, uh, so y'all don't, so y'all remember, if you got a square root and it don't have a number in that notch, it is understood to be a two sitting there. Because oh, okay. remember, square root, like 25, you found 5 and 5. Okay, so square roots, if you don't have a number there, it's a 2. So that means this fraction will now be, what, a 1 half, okay? All right, the D don't have an exponent, so I'm going to put a 1 by it. Now remember, when I got exponents raised to an exponent, I multiplied. So this was coming off the support part right here. So y'all with the C, well, what's six times one half? Six halves. Uh, six halves, but that'll turn into a? Six. Yeah, three, my bad, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, one times one half is just one half, so that part will stay D to the one half. So y'all, what is the last thing I can do to that? 
Could you? Oh. Oh, hold on. That's. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me put them in parentheses. Okay. So I got a product under here, member. So your next move, when we had a product, let me find my sheet. Remember, when I had a product, I got to rewrite them as addition, okay? So this will be a log C to the third plus a log D to the one half. Okay, so now I got this product written as a sum. So now tell me the last move. I think it's what you was about to say, but you want to do that on this step. Was it put the exponents um, in front? Yeah, put the exponents in front. So I get a three log C. Plus, let's see, that's going to give me what a one half log D. So y'all, the first thing you on these problems, notice when I got these radicals, I got to get them turned into these fractional exponents, okay? So I'm going to do number 11 right here so I got more room for it. Number 11, log base C of the fourth root, and I got a big fraction under here. I got an M8 in 20 over a C7 and an A5. All of this is under this radical. So when you rewrite this, you want to keep all this together. So you're going to bring out your M8 in 20 over C7 a five. So y'all, I need a fractional exponent out here. What would we put? Would it be one? Oh, I couldn't hear you. What did y'all just say? One fourth. One yeah. fourth. So remember, this little index here is always that bottom number, okay? So y'all look, just like I did here. I distributed my outside exponent. This one fourth, we got to multiply that one fourth by all four of these exponents. So let's bring down that log base C. 40M, eight times one fourth. What's that give me? So we got eight times one fourth. Well, that's going to give me eight fourths, which is two. two. So I get an M squared. How about the N? You got 20 times one fourth. Four. So basically, that'll be 20 over four, which that'll reduce to a five. On the bottom, I got a seven. Seven times one fourth. We all multiply it straight across. I get a seven over four. And y'all guess what? That one don't reduce. So my C will be a seven fourths. And then here's my A. A, I have five times one fourth. So multiply it straight across, I get five over four. That one doesn't reduce. So my A ends up with a five over four. So first, get it out of the radical with the fractional exponent. Then distribute that exponent by multiplying by all the exponents on the inside. Now, here comes the fun part. I got a log C. The two factors on top, member, will be positive. The two factors on the bottom will be negative. So I'm going to log C of M squared plus a log base C of N to the fifth minus log base C of C to the seven fourth minus log base C of A to the five fourths.
Okay, so the two on top, positive, two on bottom, negative. Now, let me say this. On three of these, I'm going to move the exponents. I'm going to move this two down. I'm going to move the five down. And I'm going to move this five fours down. I'm not doing that to this one because you got a log base C of a C to the seventh fourth. So the base of your result matches that base. That means this log C of C to the seventh fourth is going to turn into what? Seven fourths. Seven fourths. Good job. All right. So let's fix the other one. We're going to bring that down to log base C of M plus five log base C of N minus seven fourths minus five fourths log C of A. So y'all watch out for these when they match, okay? Remember, I had one up here with the B's matching, and now you had one down here where the C's matched up, okay? All right, y'all, so let me let y'all catch up on that, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna go the other way. We're gonna take one or uh, two or three logs and turn them into a single. And y'all, they're not real bad. You just got to keep up with all them little rules there. So it's 10, 11. All right, so we're on 12 next, right? All right, so on these next exercises, they want us to express as a single logarithm. So they're going to hit us with all them rules again. So for R number 12, they're giving me log base C of 67 plus log base C of 59. So y'all remember, these are written as a sum. So remember, over here on these properties, if it was written as a sum to go the other way, we're going to have to write it as a product. So that means this would give me a log base C of 67 times 59. And y'all, you got to go one step further with Math Lab and actually multiply those. So bring down your log C. All right, so let me see. I got what, uh, 67 times 59. That's going to give me 3,953. So 3,953. That's what Math Lab wants as the final answer. So addition, we write as a product, and we only have one log left, okay? How about this? Log 100 minus log of 10. These are being subtracted. So remember, when I had subtraction over here on our sheet, subtraction, when we write it, looks like a quotient. And guess what? Positive stuff on top, the negative stuff will be the bottom, okay? So they both got a log. Hey, y'all, guess these logs don't have a number by them. So what number would really be there? 10. 10. So a 10, okay. Well, you're real low on your volume. Um, but yeah, anytime there's not a log there, it would really be a 10, okay? All right, so the top is positive. That's going to be my 100 over the bottom. And now, 
Y'all can go further because you know what 100 divided by 10 is. So let's see, 100 divided by 10 is 10. So now on this one, that's one of the answers. But then they got another block here. And they say, hey, this log of 10 will actually go further. So if you have a log base 10 of 10, what does that equal in the long run? One. One. So, so y'all, you're going to get your log like this, and they're going to make you simplify it even further, okay? Oh, y'all, look at this. One third log base C of an X plus five log base C of a Y minus four log base C of an X. So I will say this. The last thing I did while go when I wrote them as sums and differences will be the first thing I do here. And remember, the last thing I usually did was bring the exponents down to the front. So if we're going the other direction, our first move would be to put all them exponents behind the variables. So y'all watch this. We'll bring down our long base C of X to the one third. Plus here, we'll have a log base C of Y to the fifth minus log base C of X to the fourth. So your first move is to bring the exponents up to the variables. Now, you've got stuff being added and subtracted. So since we got stuff that's being subtracted, when we're done, we know it's going to end up as a fraction. So y'all, here we go. Bring out that log base C. Also, remember this. I told y'all a while ago, if they were positive, they went to the top. And then the negative will go to the bottom. So on top, you'll have an X to the one third. A Y to the fifth. So notice, these are right by each other like you're multiplying. Well, remember, addition got rewritten as multiplication. All right, then on the bottom, this minus x4, I'm going to bring the x4 to the bottom. All right, so now here's this part. You see you got this x to the one-third over that x to the fourth. So I got an X to the one third over X to the fourth. Remember from the support, when you got a variable over a variable, you subtract exponents. So this will become X to the one third minus four. So y'all let's figure out what a one third minus four is. So I got one divided by three minus four. Now I'm going to turn this back into a fraction by hitting math and enter twice. So it gives me a negative 11 thirds. So I get an X to the negative 11 thirds. But y'all listen, I can't keep that X on top with a negative 11 third exponent, right? So remember to make that exponent positive, I got to put my X under a one and then the exponent becomes positive. So remember, when you got negative exponents, move them down to make them positive. If they're in the bottom and negative, you move them to the top. So y'all, since that exponent ended up being on the bottom, the only thing on top will be our y to the fifth. And on bottom, we'll have our x to the 11 thirds. So this one made us go further because of this right here. You're not allowed to have X's on top and X's on the bottom. And y'all follow this rule. Since the four is bigger than the one third, 
This is what I call bottom heavy. And notice the answer stayed in the bottom. If this was reversed and the four was on top and the one third was on the bottom, then the answer would have stayed up top, okay? So it always stays where the bigger exponent was. All right, so y'all will probably have something similar to mine, a third and a whole number here. So just remember, subtract and see what you get. And y'all, I ain't gonna lie, that's probably one of the trickier ones here because of this happening, okay? Let's see what y'all do here. Ln x to the six minus three times the ln of the cube root of x to the fifth. You know, first thing I want to do on the side here, side work, I want to figure out what this cube root of x to the fifth equals as a fractional exponent. So that'll be what? x to the? Three, five thirds, how bad? x to the five thirds, good job. So that's becoming an x to the five thirds here. Now notice, this one already has all the exponents up here. But y'all, we got this three down here. Remember, our first move would be to bring that three back up here. So I'm going to have a ln of x to the six minus ln. So let's see what happens here. When you bring the exponent up, you're multiplying that three times that five third. So we're going to multiply three times five thirds. Well, y'all look what happens. Those threes cancel, and that equals a five. So you're going to get an x to the fifth. Because remember, if you'd brought it up here, that cube root would have canceled with that exponent, making the x to the fifth all that was left. All right, at this point, they're being subtracted, so we're, we're going to rewrite this as a quotient. So bring out your ln. The x to the sixth goes to the top. x to the fifth, since it's being subtracted, goes to the bottom. So y'all, I ask y'all, you got one more move. So remember, am I allowed to have X's on top of X's? No. Six minus five. And that is? One. So guess what? I don't even have to write the one, right? Because it's understood to be a one there. So good job. Final answer is ln of X, okay? All right, y'all, let me let y'all catch that up. Um, and remember, all she did was six minus five gave me one. And since it was bigger on top, I could leave my X on the top like that, okay? There we go. All right, let me fix this paper turning. All right, also two more of these. So let's see, we got 16. We got an LN this time of X squared plus 10X plus 24 minus the LN of an X plus six. So, y'all, I don't have exponents in front of these LNs to move up. So, I guess the first thing we got to do is rewrite this as a single log. So, they both got an LN. So, bring out the LN. This is being subtracted. So, anytime you got subtraction, it's going to look like a fraction. The positive factor on top.
over the factor that was being subtracted, the x plus six. You know, unfortunately, this one, I got to go further because I'm going to have to factor the top because if the top has a factor of x plus six, we got to cancel that out, okay? So let's get this top ready to factor. Now, there's nothing I can do to the bottom because that's a single x plus six. So the bottom is going to stay x plus six at this point. So I got an x squared, so that's going to give me an x and an x. So remember, all we're doing there, we got a factor. Would it be six and four? Oh, six and four, good job. What signs? Plus uh, positive and positive. Positive and positive. And then factors of 24 that gave me 10 was six and four. Also, guess what I can do now? I got a factor of X plus six on the bottom. I got a factor of X plus six on the top. We're going to come through and cancel those. So that we end up with an ln of X plus four. Now y'all, check this out. You got to leave this in parentheses in math lab because this whole factor is being affected by that ln, okay? All right, and all we did here, we canceled the common factor. Okay. So they thought y'all enjoyed factoring so much on that one. They gave us one to do with a log. So I got a log of x squared minus 5x minus 14 minus a log of an x squared minus four. Notice, no exponents up front to bring up. So we're gonna rewrite it as a single log. So we'll bring out our log. Positive factor on top. The factor being subtracted goes to the bottom. Oh, and y'all guess what? X squared on top, X squared on bottom. So we will have to factor both of those. So let's play with the top. You got an X squared, so that'll give me an X and an X. What signs would y'all put on that? Positive and negative. So positive and a negative. Good job. Because remember, that last one's negative. You got one of each. Now, can you find me factors of 14 that'll subtract? Remember, when they got unlike signs, you want them to subtract to get that five. Two and seven. Two and seven. Two and seven. Now, remember, the larger number has the same sign as the middle. All right, y'all, the bottom has an x squared, so that's an x and an x. The last number is a negative four. What's the middle number going to be? Does it don't have an x in the middle? Remember, that is like a zero. Zero, there you go. So the last number is negative, so you got unlike signs again. So what factors of four subtract to give me a zero? Two and two. Well, I think, am I hearing two and two? Yes. Yeah. All right. So y'all, I guarantee you, y'all 16 will have one cancel out. Your 17 is going to have one that cancels out. Now, since I'm left with just a fraction, I can put the X minus seven on top over the X minus two. I don't have to put these in parentheses because it ended up as being one big fraction. So on that one, I can get away with log X minus seven divided by the X minus two. But this one, since it didn't end up as a fraction, you really got to put that in the uh, calculator like that. What happens on this one, if you don't use parentheses, it treats it like this. 
okay? So when you use parentheses, it treats it as the ln of x plus my ln of four, okay? All right, y'all, let me see. So that was what, 17? All righty, so that's all of 9.5. So y'all just remember, it's combining the support rules for exponents that we went over. And the reason I was having to simplify those X's was because of this quotient rule. And then the 9.5 college algebra focused on these uh, properties of logarithms, okay? And y'all remember that big one that I was using on those big complex problems was this log base A of A to the X in the long run equaled X on those, okay? All right, y'all, so hit me with your questions. And y'all, I'll tell you, these aren't bad. Yours are going to follow the same patterns. They'll change these numbers up and stuff. Um, but just follow them properties and you'll be good to go. So in support, uh, when I was doing some of the, uh, I think it was the log 10 over 10 to the fourth or something like that, it, it was very sensitive on how I put the answer in there. So I had to have the equal sign right next to the exponent. Because it did not, it kept you know giving me a wrong one until I okay. So, okay. so this was so this was, was this was, was nine point five support. Yeah, I believe it was nine point five support. If that's the next one, um, I'm not yeah, able to look yeah. at it right now. Because for nine point nine support, I was just showing this show problems. problems. So what's the one before the support in the math lab? All right, all right. So Jonathan, hang on. I'm getting a lot of ain't a lot of ain't really hear you. Is it better now? Yeah. yeah. Let me pull up my map. I'm gonna pull yours up. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm just logging this log here real quick. All right, I'm getting, right, I'm getting this to, to the class now. All right, so Jonathan, for nine five support, you got a hundred. Yeah, what I'm saying, like in some of the questions, I can't remember which one. I think it's the one that said log ten uh, exponent of ten thousand. You have to rewrite it as an um, exponent. Okay, so that, would been, that would have been for the uh, the actual nine point five, I think. Let's see. Nope, so you ain't done that one yet. Uh, hmm. Let me see what this. So is it one you've actually? Yeah, it's one I did. I think it was uh, question number two, one or two. All right, so I'm going to pull your stuff up and see if these are any of these, okay? Okay. Let me make sure I got sure. I got sure. All right, so your number one is this. Um, you had an X, uh, had X, X, X to the negative six. six. So you're good on your good. All right, so number my three. Because you just added, you just added. 
No. And that one you had a big number. <laughs> Well, that we did. Okay, no, no, well, I'll, I'll look back on it later and I guess I'll see your email. Yeah, because yeah. the, the last thing that we had long was what we did. I think he was talking about four and seven and ten. Right, so those are just growing this right. And those are just so that was all of that. Was all of that. Uh, uh, so um, figure that one out, uh, Jonathan. And uh, next class, we'll go over whichever one you got. Okay. okay. I have a question. I hear you. Um, on number 10, what we just went over, um, how did that exponent become a half, like on the square root? Why oh. was that a half and not two? So let me bring this page back up. So on your radicals, so let me see, number 10 had, uh, I started out with this log of the square root of C6D. That one? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So the thing about it, when we rewrite radicals as fractional exponents, it's always whatever exponent is by the variable goes to the top of the fraction, the root or the index goes to the bottom. So this basic pattern would be the M over in for that, okay? So, oh, okay, I remember now. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. So it's yes. something like this. This X, it has an exponent by it. If it ain't shown, it would be a one there, okay? Mm -hmm. This radical, the only number that it can be when there's not a number shown here is a two. So, which does the square roots of these, right? Um, so that's the only time if there's not a number on the radical, it's definitely a two. So then I just pulled this out as an X to the one half. You at least have to have a one on the top, okay? So when okay. I did, uh -huh, so you oh. did Well, the six was just throwing me off too. Yeah, because that C six and that D, this stuff that was under the radical, I put it in parentheses. And I turn this square root into a one half. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then after that, I just started multiplying and went through it. Okay. Got it. Thanks. So yeah, um, that's always usually my first thing. If I got them radicals and I know I'm going to be messing with exponents, I always sort of convert them over. Alrighty, also let me quit this recording.